everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joey Young and today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint intuitively and create a fantasy painting just like this. So if you want to learn how to delve into your own creativity and become more of a free happy painter, then stay tuned. So today we're working on a 16 by 20 canvas that's been primed once with acrylic gesso. We're going to begin this painting with titanium white and light ultramarine blue. I've got a large chalk paintbrush here just for blending and I got it a little bit wet first. I'm going to begin with this light blue violet and I'm going to come around just creating some soft sweeps. I want to create a really flowy type of sky, so I'm pulling and twisting over. Load up my brush again. And just really exaggerate this flow that we've got. All these curvy lines. And then bring it right down low here. And I'm just going to start with a simple design like this. Um, oftentimes I do this if I'm not really sure what I want to paint. I kind of just work with the movement and creating a pattern first. And then I sort of just make up a landscape and painting as I go along. I just start to begin to see something. So this is one of my intuitive approaches and styles to painting. Sometimes I use photographs, but more and more as I paint, I tend to want to kind of just do my own thing. And I think you guys might be interested in seeing this today and possibly trying something like this for yourself. Okay, the next brush and color I'm going to use, I've got a number 12 Pro Stroke Filbert brush. I'm going to use some of my titanium white. And without getting it wet first, I'm just going to get a little bit on the end of my brush to work with. And I'm just going to start following along these lines. So this is just going to make some softer tones in here. Because I plan to filter over with some of my neon colors. I'm going to go back into my blue now. Just sweep. Sweep inside these. Alternating with the blue and the white. Just creating a relaxing sort of a pattern first. And I don't know how much of this I'm actually going to keep. This is just kind of part of the process. I might keep it. I'm going to take this down a little bit lower here. And just keep exaggerating and pulling this down lower. So 
It's just really like, relaxing to do this too. If you're kind of just in one of those moods where you're not sure what you want to paint, but you're, you just know that you want to paint something, but you don't know what. Just start with a pattern like this and see where it takes you. It's kind of some art therapy, I guess you could say. I've been fulfilling a lot of requests for people lately and um, sometimes that can be a little bit tiring. I do enjoy doing it, but sometimes we have to take, you know, some time for ourselves to just, just do let go of everything, just to let go of everything and do uh, more of what we love to do. It's kind of looking like waves reminding me of water right now. inside take a little bit so I'm just alternating with white and blue something down here as well. So I think I'm going to try this off and come in with some more colors now. Okay, so I'm ready to start adding some of my other colors. I've got some neon yellow, um, neon pink, and some neon orange. I'll also be adding a little bit of turquoise and maybe a few other colors along the way, but I'll be sure to let you guys know what they are, and I'll post everything below in the description of this video. I'll be using um, bright aqua green for my turquoise. I'm also going to be adding some purple violet. Now because this painting is all dried off now, I can come over top and add a filter of a few of these colors here and there and we'll see um, where that takes us. So I'm just going to keep using my filbert brush. Of course I've washed it out. It's still just a little bit damp and I'm going to begin with a little bit of this neon yellow. I'll take a tiny bit of white. And I think I'm going to start right here. I'm going to take a bit more water on my brush. A bit more of that yellow. I might not even need my turquoise. I think the turquoise would be a different a nice addition though, I guess, because this is making a different type of a green color. Um, so what I can do is also take a little bit more of my pale yellow I've made here. And I'm going to just kind of make it look like a bunch of different colors, almost like Kind of a rainbow ribbon. Fill in a little bit in here. Turquoise. Add a bit of white to it. A little bit of water. I don't want it to be too drippy. And let's see. Just 
start adding some in here. Just use a little bit for now. A little bit more water on my brush here just to loosen this paint up so I can get it out of my brush a little bit easier. So I'm not sitting here scrubbing and scrubbing the canvas. And I'm, I'm not picking these areas for any specific reason other than I'm just deciding I want to be random with it and add a little bit here and there. The thing about intuitive painting is to um, stay away from um, thinking too much and planning too much of what your next step is going to be. It's more of not thinking and just, just trusting where you want to add colors, just doing it spur of the moment. Okay, I'm going to take some of my neon orange now. I'm going to tint it with some white. A little bit of water on my brush and a bit more water. Start overlapping here. Now it's gonna, gonna start to look a little bit muddy in some areas. So we're gonna get some earth tones, but I like that, I want that to happen. It's nice to have that uh, balance, having a little bit of brown. And it can happen when you're layering browns and purples with yellows like this and, and oranges. Now sometimes when I'm adding this orange over this blue violet, it makes a really pretty purple color. But that's definitely not going to happen over the turquoise. See, it's going to look a little bit more like that earth tone that I want to achieve. Okay, so time for our next color. I'm going to use pink. I'm going to be a little bit bolder this time. And come in and add more more of this color than the other ones there's no other reason that I just really love this color right now and I feel like I need to use it and use more of it So I'm going to get the brush loaded up again. I just grabbed a little bit of, a little bit of water. What happens when you start to come over top and layer? That's why it's so fun to have these all these colors underneath and the bits of white. When I added that white there with the blue, I knew that it would create a softer tone when I applied these colors over top.
pick up some of my yellow again without washing my brush off and do a little braid with color in here and see what happens. Start adding a little bit more. So we've got some earth tones, some muddy tones happening here, and I like that. I'm starting to get an idea of how I can turn this into a landscape. I want to take a bit of my orange, yellow, and white, and we'll come right down here and up. Back to my pink, a little bit of white. So take a little bit of this purple violet. here at the bottom, scoop, go back up, and then kind of just turn my brush over a curve and sweep over. Take a little bit of my blue violet or light ultramarine blue. Mix it with a little bit of that purple and just start adding some of that as well. I'm going to go make this a little bit darker down here. Take a little bit of my sap green now, and then I'm going to start by taking a little bit of my light blue violet and purple. I'm going to get a bit of water on my brush, and I'm going to just start pulling and flicking. I'm going to start adding some trees in here. Take a little bit more of my purple and then add a little bit of this sap green in here that'll make a really nice color. Just going to do a simple tree trunk like that. Just start tapping in. Just for some little branches. I'm going to have that sweep down so it kind of just gets lost. Just 
in with all the other swirls and lines. I want everything to kind of flow and get connected together. And I'll add another one right here. Love, absolutely love the way a filbert brush makes branches on trees. It's just so effortless. So see the nice earthy, almost like an avocado green or olive green color that we get when we overlap. That's why it's so fun to play with a background like this. So where else? Maybe we could have a small one here and create some perspective. I could use a smaller brush for this tree, but if I don't press too hard, I can work with it. Make it look like they're just disappearing off wherever that leads. Maybe we'll have some, some ground down here. Put this in a little bit of shadow. Just overlap what's left in my brush here. And then right away, without thinking too much about it, I just want to take some bright neon yellow and go over part of this. I want a vibrant, lush green look right here. And no better combination to achieve that than using this neon yellow over top of another green or even a little bit of black. Okay, so I think I'll come over on this side and just staircase moving up a scoopy sort of a staircase <laughs> leading up there I don't know what it's what's gonna be up there yet we can come along the edge and slowly start tapping in some foliage Pull lightly and drag. Just gonna tap and then pull and blend out.
And then put, start gradually adding some foliage over here. It starts to kind of twist and turn up the side. And slightly coming over the top of these steps. And then we can start to turn our steps, make it look like they're winding down here. Smaller and smaller. And then you could have a little frame that comes down here like this. Just pulling and sweeping. Well, something like that. We could add some bright green to the top. Where it's skinnier and kind of just goes off back there. Just make it smaller at the top there and then add a little bit of white. So the other indication that those stairs are just continuing up there wherever that leads. And then come in on the side here. And just tap in some highlights. Again, just still using that neon yellow with the white. I've got a little bit of green in my brush here still, so I'm kind of getting a bit of a greeny yellow mixture. And maybe just for the fun of it, we could take a little bit of our green purple. We have some Little bits of vines and things hanging here. And maybe in here we could add some purple. Or my light, it looks purple right now. A little bit of this light blue violet. A little bit more in shadow. A little bit more of that blue there. Add a little bit to the stairs. Switch over to a smaller filbert brush now and continue painting some trees. So again, my purple, purple green mixture. And maybe we'll have a little something here on the side coming in on an angle. Get my tree trunk a little bit thicker. Fill my brush up a little bit more.
fill in a little bit of uh, that light yellowy green color. This is a little bit darker. Show up and stand out a little bit more. Take a bit more of my yellow now. Make it look like there's some moss, grassy area here. Moving up on the side and over some of these stairs. Get a really beautiful green color happening here when this dries. I'll add some more down here as well. tree here. Why not? So I'm thinking right in here I'm going to have a few little bushes and a few little waterfalls. Before I add my waterfalls, I need to make this a little bit darker in here so it's dry and I can filter over. And I'm going to filter over with a little bit of my blue violet, a little bit of turquoise. turquoise up here. I'm going to add some down here as well. I'm just going to add the indication of some leaves here. more of this blue, light blue violet. Okay, without drying this off, I'm going to go right into adding my waterfalls. And I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. This with a flat brush and just have a little something dropping here, coming over here. Okay. And some more right down in here. And maybe we'll just have a little, pretty little pool down here at the bottom. And we can add waterfalls wherever we want. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more. And go over with fresh coat of white. You could make some colorful waterfalls. Maybe take a little bit of neon, your neon colors here and mix them up with some white. And where else could we have some? Maybe we've got some this coming from just dropping down right from these ripples in the sky. take one of my brushes I like to use for foliage and this is a one inch um, oval Princeton mop brush. Okay so I just I got an idea of what I want to do here the way the stairs are set in here it sort of slopes down I'm going to create almost like a, a hill sort of like a cave that's kind of coming up here and I'm going to take that purple with my green again. A little bit more of that purple. I love the deep, rich green I get by taking the purple with it. So I'm just going to start only focusing the majority of the paint right here. Now this brush, I think I've seen better days. Not looking at it well right now. I'm going to switch my brush over because I don't like the way this is working. And I've got a large filbert brush. This one's kind of loose but it still works well. It's a number 30. And this one will give me a little bit more control. It won't give me the puffy looking foliage that I want, but I've got a few other brushes that um, I can use in just a minute when I add my... See how it kind of just... When you have all these swirls and patterns in a painting for the backdrop, you can play off of them and you can create something really interesting like this. It's really fun to do this. And I'm going to add some greenery here, moss, and then around, pull and drag and overlap on either side of the waterfalls a little bit just to get those set in there. And then I'm also going to take some of my yellow, start to add a little bit, a little bit of white too. A little bit of a highlight here and then a little sweep, tap tap, gentle sweep. This will just prevent it from looking too solid 
and you want it to look a little bit more three-dimensional once it dries. Just gonna lightly pull and flick for a little bit of hanging vines there. I just want to write this a little bit, a little bit thicker right in here. We'll go ahead and just tap some some foliage down in here as well. You see how important it is to have this kind of muddy purple green tone in here. It just really sets off uh, all the other colors and makes them all work well together. a little bit darker. I mean, I like those little tones and hints of turquoise and blue, so I'm not going to cover it all up, but I just want to have a little bit more depth in that area there. Just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just about done this painting. I want to add uh, highlights to the bushes here and this going up here. So down here I can just continue to use the same brush. I didn't wash it out. I want to see, work out some of that greenish color in there. Tap to load it up and A little bit of this to the side of my waterfalls. On a brighter highlight, and I think I just want one highlight or shade brighter, just right in here. Maybe make it look like there's some of these waterfalls that are that soft greenish color. That's kind of pretty too. Do that a little bit, a little bit at the top here. I always do a little tap and then pull.
a little bit more of a highlight to the foliage on the side here. And then just add some final highlights. Tap and sweep. It's not the brush I want to be using right now, but it'll do. Just a little sweep, barely touching the canvas, just really, really light for kind of a faraway faded look of some grass in there. So if I go like this with my brush, maybe I can make it stipple worthy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call this one done, guys. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed watching this today and learning how to paint a little bit more intuitively yourselves. Um, you can tell how calm I sound. I feel very content right now from um, working this way. It's really, really enjoyable, and it is a form of art therapy. So I encourage you guys to give something like this a try or follow along step by step with me and feel, feel free to paint this as well. Um, so I want to wish you guys a wonderful day. Happy painting. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.